The Bear Essentials Podcast gives older bears a place to gather for real talk regarding topics and issues that they can relate to. Here at The Bear Essentials, we aren't just having conversations. We are looking to provide actionable intelligence through real-life experience and expertise of our guests. Our mission is to build a strong community that elevates and motivates people to go beyond their limiting beliefs by helping them realize that getting older is not an excuse to hibernate on their goals, but a reason to work harder. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Charles Wallace. Welcome to 2023 here at the Bear Essentials Podcast. I hope you're all having a great start to the new year, and I'm really excited for today's show. Today, for the first time, I actually have two guests. One is my brother, Jeff Wallace, along with his business partner, King Lee. Together, their company, Punch King Fitness, is revolutionizing the fitness industry. So without further ado, let's jump into my interview with Jeff Wallace and King Lee, Punch King Fitness. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, Today, a little different. I have actually two guests. And, you know, believe it or not, um, I have my less attractive brother here on the phone with me, uh, (laughs) Jeff Wallace and and his partner. Um, Really excited to talk to everyone today, though, with uh, what these two have going on. Um, It's fantastic and interesting all at the same time. And I think it'll really help inspire some people to really, really kick off 2023 and their health and fitness goals. So let's uh, let's jump in. I'm going to have you guys introduce yourselves. Maybe uh, let's start with you, Jeff. Um, yeah, my name's uh, Jeff Wallace. Uh, you know, obviously, I'm the more attractive brother. <laughs> um, <laughs> I am, uh, you know, uh, the owner of Punch King Fitness here in New Jersey and uh you know, we recently uh, rebranded a concept that I had been working on for a multitude of years and aligned ourselves with King and his team out in California to to bring forward a vision for growth that incorporates, you know, a lot of different things, including technology and, of course, the, you know, um, unique product designs that King has to offer through his products division. Nice, Jeff. Thanks for that. And um, King, would you introduce yourself? Yeah. Hey, my name is King Lei. I am the CEO of Punch King. Was, uh, it comprises of uh, the products division and as well as the Punch King Fitness. Um, um, so that's where um, we have started to partner with uh, Jeff and his team over in New Jersey, which is, has been a great relationship thus far for the last few months and couldn't be more happier. I'm excited to see what, what's going to happen over there on the East Coast. Great guys. So, so this is definitely near and dear to me too, right? Like, and Jeff, Jeff and I have always grown up, been involved with some type of combat sports and things like that. Uh, me more than Jeff, I, I've actually had my own issues as far as weight, things like that. So I know this type of information and, and is really valuable. So Jeff, let me start with you though, because you like, I know what you were doing with box it. Like before we jump into the specifics, right? Like what, what do people need to hear almost? And like, how, how can people really like just take it, take control of their lives? Because I think so many people are allowing themselves to just, they let themselves go. Mm-hmm. I know I did. So, so let's start there. How can you guys help get people to take their lives back? Well, I think it all boils down, obviously. And you know, this um, speaking from firsthand experience, it boils down to motivation, right? And uh, one of the critical components of getting motivated is just finding something you love. You know, and uh, what we've been busy here doing, um, building out this brand of Punch King Fitness is creating this um, multifaceted experience where um, the members are engaged on a level that you're simply not going to find in other gyms. It involves performance metrics, technology, heart rate zone training, obviously the unique product designs, um, the authentic component, you know, behind combat sports that we're able to bring you know, all these positive methods of training to the general masses. I mean, years ago when we were growing up, you you know, um, you didn't train in combat sports unless you were serious about self-defense or competing, being a boxer, MMA fighter or whatever. Um, the standard soccer mom, for instance, would never dream of stepping into a fight gym or one of the boxing gyms that we grew up with around in Philly. Um, you remember what those are like, um, <laughs> not necessarily female-oriented. But there's so many positive components 
um, of training associated with combat sports. Combat sports, um, you know, at its very core is hit training. We're all familiar with, you know, boot camps, things like that. People are doing all sorts of hit style training, you know, and then, um, you know, naturally that type of training brings a, a wealth of, you know, positive health benefits, you know, um, boxing in particular, kickboxing, MMA style training brings other health benefits to the equation as well that you might not find in your ordinary gym. For instance, there's um, a greater cerebral component to what we're doing in our approach naturally. So with that comes a wealth of cognitive benefits too. Now you're seeing people with um, diseases such as Alzheimer's and stuff like that take up boxing at a later stage in life. We, we thought we'd never see that um, just to take advantage of those positive um, impacts for that disease specifically. And that's just one example. Um, you know, there's also uh, concerns with women, for instance, about things like osteoporosis and stuff like that as they age to where boxing specifically or any type of contact sport, when you take the positive elements of the training, it improves things like bone mineral density and stuff like that and actually improves your bone and joint health. You know, and the types of uh, classes and training that we're doing is incorporating not just that hit component, but we're utilizing a lot of overload style strength training, which you can go at your own pace so it's not intimidating. So you're getting that strength component, which is important for, you know, aging, as well as the cardiovascular component. And, you know, we can't speak enough about that. So um, so the key for us is getting people involved in this, you know, immersed in this experience that they just get addicted to and they love. And now they're doing something that they never dreamed in a million years they'd be doing. And it's so different and so cool compared to going to a gym and running on a treadmill, getting fed up after two weeks of your new year resolution, and then quitting and never accomplishing a thing, you know, but in addition to that, we're taking that, um, in a super personalized approach and holding people to account as well. It's very personalized experience. We get to know everybody. We get to know their families. You know, we're always checking in, making sure people are doing well. And we're holding them to strict account, making sure that they're actively engaged in the product that we offer. A lot of gyms, you know, I won't mention any gym names, but there's a lot of gyms out there that just throw a bunch of equipment in a room, slap on a gym sign. Anybody with a little bit of money can do that. You know, what we sell here is, is more than just our products are amazing. I can't speak highly enough about that. The amount of time, energy and money we put into the studios goes without saying it's enormous. So when you walk in, you're coming into an incredibly badass experience. The equipment's awesome. The gyms look fantastic. It grabs you as soon as you walk through the door, you, you know, but what you're getting is the service component. A lot of these other gyms, they want you paying for a membership, but they really don't want you there, you know, because if they're there, you know, um, nobody's there to really service those members. So you're more or less selling things like treadmills and dumbbells. And you know what? If that's what you're into, you'd be better off buying that stuff and training out of your garage. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. No, that makes sense. So, so King, I noticed one thing that jumped out at me, at me, and I know Jeff just kind of touched on it. I think the look and feel of the gym is it's, it's different, <clears throat> but it is engaging. And I think a lot of that has to do with that type of equipment. So from your perspective and how you were involved in in this journey for you and this company like what is it about that equipment and what do you think about to help help make that equipment where it's the the most user friendly most and most useful and it also attracts the the people to want to come in yeah no so you know jeff hit a, a bunch of great points about you know technology you know design and everything i got into this five years ago um you know basically what happened i, I i've been on and off of muay thai over 15 years and um as as jess said you know there's a lot of you know studios like muay thai boxing you know even when i was younger i'm 50 now so back in the heyday when there was real boxing gyms you wouldn't want to go in just like you say and i'm sure in philly that's even that 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 the aura of walking to a gym is even 
bigger than that. And I wouldn't even set foot in one of those, even you, you, even as a male for myself, right? Um, so my journey has been more like, it started with my daughter. Um, so she's nine now, five, when she was five, anti-bullying, you know, I, I, I know how I was and maybe both of you when we were little boys and how we probably treated those little girls, right? And I'm like, hell no, I'm not going to let my daughter get bullied or, you know, picked on. So took her to a, um, a Muay Thai gym that's uh, local and he got her into it because it was a dad, daddy daughter class or, you know, adult kids class and made her more comfortable to do it. So I did it with her and it kind of got me back into it because I've been out of, um, you know, doing Muay Thai for probably five years before that. So I started hitting the bag again and, you know, something came to me about designing a bag like, hey, how can I, you know, what if I put targeted points on this bag where you can do proper hooks an actual uppercut, you can't uppercut the bag, right? So I, I we added the uppercut, you know, but the curves in it um, were critical to make sure that the natural progression of a, uh, of your uppercut doesn't hit the bag. Um, for Muay Thai, because I did Muay Thai, there's the knee component where you can actually knee the bag and lift it up, right? So in, in my eyes, you know, for especially for women, anybody for self-defense, you know, I think the, one of the, the big things is knees, you know, if I have my student or my member do maybe a hundred thousand knees and, and they're doing it right, they're lifting the bag, you know, they're able to get under and lift the bag. And now let's just say an attacker comes at them. I don't want them to cower. Mm-hmm. I want them to have that knee pop up, hit them in the groin and him or her in the groin and run away. You know, what we're, you know, this is hip fitness, just like Jeff said, we're, we're teaching people one to be fit, to, to and have the best badass workout around. But at the same time, we want them leaving knowing they have a skill i don't want them being you know have this grandiose thing like oh i can walk out and i can go fight now right no that, that that's not the point so we it's all about seconds a couple seconds you know and the head component the, the body component you know throat chops eye gouges you can actually vis- visualize that you know there's other products out there like that but what i kind of envisioned was creating something that you can just simply replace take down your old bag and put up a new bag you know everyone's Go, oh, King, put arms on it. Put this, put that. Everybody has ideas, right? But I'm like, you know, it's, <laughs> you're taking it too far. I, I just want to be simple. I, I have a three in one bag. You can turn it around. You can hit the bag and you have your regular bag that you want, right? Um, again, technique for me, I think, you know, people that come in our gym, you know, there's a, we have a gym in San Jose. And, and when I see people hit the chest too much or anything, I'm like, there's a head hit the head. I designed it for that. That hook is there to do it properly, you know, because if we teach them from day one how to do these punches right, then they're going to be better at it, right? And the, the, the biggest thing is, you know, as just said, well, I don't want to mention any other studio's names, but they're there for fitness. They're burning weight, but they're, their hands are all over the place, you know. I want Punch King to actually, you know, do proper technique. You know, we're not going to enforce that, but at the same time, if you do it from the beginning, you'll get better at it as you go on, right? So the bag was the first thing that we did. Then I went to a freestanding bag. Then I went to a Walmart bag, you know, all with our design. Everything I do is kind of encompassing the Punch King design. Um, I don't want to be a me too company, just like Jeff alluded to earlier. Anyone can rent a space, paint, throw up a bunch of bags, treadmills and everything. That's a me too gym. You know, what Punch King offers is something totally different. You're going to get... Uh, innovative paddles, you know, different kind of uh, focus mitts. Um, we, ha- we have uh, another new bag um, that we're going to be coming out. I'm not going to share it yet, but it's, it's a new bag that I think is going to be phenomenal for the boxing, kickboxing industry. So again, I, I just don't want to be a Me Too uh, company. I want to be an innovator. Some people might not like the bags and that's okay. It's just another option to train. I'm not saying the, the punching bag is, is terrible. I love the punching bag. It's been around for centuries. Um, I'm never going to replace it, you know, and people love it. It's just, hey, you know, this one, you can actually improve your form, you know, move around the bag a little bit. But, you know, I, I'm all about that. And when I train now, I think about that when I and I'm thinking about products I can develop and, and kind of take this this industry forward. You know, it's been stagnant for so long. Again, a lot of these other gyms, other than their logos and designs, it's still the same gym nothing's changed at all and i think that's what punch king is doing right now is bringing the the whole you know industry forward a little bit and hope and the the biggest thing for me honestly is um i wasn't re- looking to actually expand as fast as we are now 
Um, but meeting Jeff um, and his team there, Tom and Dan, it was a natural fit. These guys knew what they were doing. They already were using the technology that we're already implementing. Um, and, and it's been pretty hands off other than sending logos back and forth, designs, you know, kind of a, a little input on how to do the setup there. I mean, Jeff and them, it's been fantastic. I don't have to go out there and like, hey, let me show you how to run these classes. You know, I went out there and actually his wife kicked my butt. And I was like, whoa, this is a great class, you know, and 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 I love it. And they actually helped me also, you know, I wasn't a big fan of like thinking about those gyms that have the disco lights and all that stuff and, and everything. But, you know, him, the Tom, they did it and I fell in love and right away I came back. I ordered it for my gym. I put it up, you know, I painted the ceiling black and everything. And, you know, because I want us all to be uniform and, and present a great look for people to say, hey, look. I want to work out in that gym. And they built such a great fa facility in, in literally eight days. Mm -hmm. Eight days, these guys went in, in there and banged it out. So I couldn't be more happier with a, a, a East Coast partner in, in these guys. And man, and they're doing fantastic right now. The videos, the content, um, the marketing, great A. Yeah, and I definitely want to, um, I, I'm going to share on the podcast, I want to share some of the some of the highlights, the equipment pictures, some of the video that I see coming out of uh, Plunge King down there with Jeff in New Jersey. Um, and King, you just touched on it, but Jeff, I want to come to you on this because I think this is something you and I, we, we, we've spoken about this before. Um, I'm by trade, by what I do for a living. I'm a, I'm a data guy. And I think one of the things you guys are doing, and some people aren't really data people, but Jeff, can you break down why is it so important that tracking and data component and you guys take the guesswork out of it, I think. And I, I want you to really get that across to people right now. It's like, why is that so valuable and, and why will that benefit them? Well, I talked in the beginning about um, motivation. So, um, you know, we used a company called Impact Wrap. Um, Tom, who is uh, my business partner, is actually one of the architects behind the technology they use at Impact Wrap. And he's also a partner here at Punch King. And uh, they, they've kind of taken, um, you've seen other companies doing like heart rate based training and stuff like that, which is fantastic. Um, we've added the performance metrics component to that. So we've married the two. So now when you come in, you can not only track your heart rate and calorie burn in real time, I mean, if you see the studio firsthand, we have 11 TVs up there where it shows everybody's data in real time. But it also downloads into a personalized app, and you can track your progressions over time. So you can see in simple form, you know, um, how you're performing on the day that you're doing it and how you're performing over a period of time. And you can literally physically see the progress that you're making. And because of that, it becomes – this sort of, um, I guess, motivation you can actually measure, you know, using these data points. And, um, you know, we're living in a technology world. I'm a convert, to be honest with you. It's not that I'm not tech savvy. I am. But I grew up in gritty, you know, type gyms that were purely, you know, combat training oriented. And uh, none of this stuff existed then. Um, you know, so it took me a little while to even – not realize the benefit because I knew there was some benefit, but to really buy into it and, uh, you know, um, combine it with a lot of these other factors to create this um, all encompassing experience um, that's going to keep members engaged. It, it is super important, though, um, you know, tracking progress. Well, what's one of the biggest issues why people quit gyms, right? They get frustrated, you know, but now we can show them in real time and beyond there's no reason to be frustrated. Look at the progress you're making. Look at how many punches you could throw now compared to how good you were doing just two weeks ago. Look at how many calories you're burning now. Look at the impact that it's had on your heart rate. You know what I mean? We're always going to be our own worst critics. So people always are the last ones to see the actual results in themselves. You know, I'll see the results in you before you will and vice versa. Mm -hmm. You know, but now we can, now it's just not talk though. It's not me saying, hey, child, you look great, by the way. It's me saying, hey, child, you look great, and look at your performance over time. Look how well you're doing now. Um, it keeps people engaged and motivated, like, wow, I really am making a lot of progress. If I keep going, there's no telling where I'll be in a year. 
you know, and, and that's the secret. I mean, um, you know, and that's why the technology component is, is so important now to what we're doing. And um, but not only that, it's empowering the workouts we're doing as well. King touched a little bit on it. Um, you know, um, it's not that we're teaching people how to be the, you know, next Bruce Lee or Chuck Norris. It has nothing to do with that. You know, I've said for the longest time as it relates self-defense, having trained a lot of people over the years, um, you know, there's a lot of martial arts out there, jujitsu, different stuff, um, a lot of your traditional martial arts where, you know, people take it for self-defense and there's nothing wrong with that. But when you take a traditional martial art to become proficient at it, you have to train, you know, this because you've trained yourself. You have to train for a multitude of years. You know, I've done it. I've been doing it now since I was a little kid. It takes that long to become uber proficient, you know, and to really have those skill sets to be able to compete on that level. When it comes to ordinary day self-defense, um, you know, I've told people forever, like, um, you know, you can go to a traditional martial arts studio or whatever, but learn how to throw a couple good punches, plain and simple. Be fit so you can run away. Survive to talk about it. There's these little things that we do repetitiously where, you know, um, people are becoming, you know, I have 60 something year old women who can knock out grown men, you know, because they've honed their punching abilities and their techniques so well because they're throwing thousands and thousands of punches or knees or kicks or elbows and they're getting really good at it. Since aligning with King, having this bag, it allows us to, you know, um, get the member to better envision how that technique should be executed, for instance. You know what I mean? You know, hitting a regular cylinder bag, I love them too, don't get me wrong. But if I say, hey, throw one, two, you know, and that's a jab cross to the face, um, it's hard for somebody that's not immersed in this world to really visualize what they're hitting or why they're hitting it. Mm-hmm. With King's bags, it's right in front of you. It's easy to see. So it's becoming, because of these bags, it's becoming even more empowering for people and keeping them motivated for those reasons as well, particularly with the women. Yep, that, that's good. So, Jeff, you just touched on something, and I'm, I want to come back to here to King because when I, when, I, when I see the gym and I see the videos, I I come at it with, I come at it from a perspective of the competition that we've spoken about that I, you know, we won't say names, but the competition King, what do you say to people? As I know, this is probably something that comes out and what I really want people to see. And I, I could see it just in a couple of minutes talking to you before this, of you're, you're genuinely interested in helping people, which is good. But what about the people, the competition that says, you know what, we're cheaper. And what you're paying for a punch King is a fad. It does nothing. What do you say to that as far as your motive and why that's not true? In the beginning, I've reached out to some of these big companies, these big franchises. I was like, hey, you know, grandiose idea. Hey, man, these guys, you know, they got what, a thousand franchises? You guys need my bags. Reached out all the way from VP, got to the CEO. Um, yeah, we don't see our your bag in our gym. Right. I got that door slam all over. You know, I, sh- I should have been dissuaded a long time ago. Right. But I'm like, no, I don't think so. You know, forget them. I'm just going to go and I'm going to go and we're going to build our own gym. Right. And show these people why this is needed, you know, and and w- and that's why we're here today. And, you know, I- I'm you know, I- 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 I'm not trying to be arrogant, but I'm like, OK, you guys better look out. We're, we're coming for you guys for sure. Because one, we want to be a better franchise or, or owners. We want to treat our franchises better. We, we've heard all the horror stories of other franchisees. They want to, they, they, a lot of them cancel their franchise. They just change the name and start running their own gym. I do a better job. I'm one of the better uh, franchises for this franchise. And, um, you know, they don't understand me or anything like that. So I don't think, you know, it's just all a matter of perception of, you know, where, where do people want to take this? And, you know, it, it's it's really humbling to have people like Jeff, who's been a, a longtime boxer himself, say, hey, this is a great product. You know, he he's told me, like, this is like, this has been the missing component 
to what I see. You know, I, I I've done boxes. You know, I can have a bunch of those, but I want to grow this to 50, 100, 200, 300, right? How is how is that going to happen? Well, with innovation, um, coupled with my my missing recipe, technically, you know, I'm not a gym person. I'm not a gym rat. I I am not that kind of person. My missing recipe is actually Jeff and his team. Jeff 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 more so than anybody because he knows this industry and you know we talk and he he educates me uh, on a level, right? So. Pricing on the bag, yeah, you know, my, my partner kind of says, hey, you know what? Yeah, bags you can get at Everlast for, you know, maybe a 100-pound bag for 90 bucks, um, big five, wherever, right? Yeah, we, we are on the high side. We are four or $500, but my 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 my, my one of my partners, is he loves cars, and he's like, we're, we're, we're the, I think he's Ferrari. He keeps saying, Lamborghini and Ferrari. We're the Lamborghini of, of bags. And, you know, I think he's right. I, I think, you know, we, our, our look, the feel, and the innovation behind the bag uh, is is just one of a kind, and I used to be really humble. I used to be like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, it, it's a good bag, you know. But now, as now the gyms have been built, um, the more we use the bag, you know, and and my bag is, you know, those MMA fighters, those big heavy weights, everything, it's not for them. I I, I don't care. I, I don't need them in our gyms, you know. I, I love them. I love watching the sport. I admire them a lot, but. Those aren't the ones that the bag, these bags are made for. They're made for the everyday person that wants to get fit, to learn how to punch correctly, to kick correctly. Um, the motivation behind all the bag just kind of puts it, the, 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 the data. So, you know, I didn't mention, I, I am an integration engineer by trade. So I fell in love with the technology in an instant. And I'm like, this on our bag? You know, people go for points. And I'm not, I'm not a really big point person because I'd rather see a, one, two, three, jab, cross, hook, done right, then a million punches like this, just so you can have that score, you know, and, and the score is always great, you know, um, you know, the, the, the thing about the, the impact of technology in our bag is uh, one thing, <coughs> we, we have a lot of kids in, in one of our locations here in San Francisco, and the gamification of this too, people like to see their points, they want to be number one on the leaderboard, and who doesn't want more games than kids, right? And one, one story that I have is um, we had a class and there's two brothers that just, they're, they're going at it all the time. We're talking about five, six-year-old, six, seven-year-old. And the mom uses it too to, to kind of entice them. Well, if you do good, you get this, you might get this, this, this. Well, one of the bags wasn't turned on, right? And and uh, it was kind of late to turn it on. And I was like, you know, in my head, because I'm kind of like Jeff, you know, don't worry about the points. Don't worry about the points. Just just do it right. I don't care about that. But, you know, at the end of it, I was like, oh, yeah, it's okay. And then he goes, the, the mom says, he really likes his points. And the other brother's over here like, ah, ha, ha, look at me, look at me. And the other one's like really pissed off. And I'm like, you know, and, and that changes my thoughts. And I'm like, wow, these kids really, really care about their points. They're punching. They're punching like this. Looking at the screen. I'm like, stop looking at the screen. Just punch the bag correctly. And it, it's it's just so funny, and I'm learning every day about my my bags. Um, for one thing, I learn more from. You know, so I have some really uh, five time kickboxing champions that come through. They show me, hey King, if you kick like this on the bag, you know, there's the curves. They actually kick these curves. My curves were kind of meant to be just kind of like you know natural 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 progressions of your knees and your uppercuts. These guys actually hit those points because they say, oh yeah, the curves kind of simulate. Uh, extra impact in when you kick or even the punches right because if you think about you know, there's the head but there's the chest you know the the distance factor that you have is huge and i'm like i'm learning more and more every day about the bags i designed it for this but now they're saying oh we use it for this and this and this you know we have wall mounts um in one of our locations and those are the wall mounts they don't move or anything and i had these two jujitsu guys uh half gracie um um, his student, you know, hey, Alan, they were there and another big guy, one of our fighters, Vla uh, Vladimir, they were there and they were kind of like on the bag and they were like up on it, like their sweat was getting on it and they, they were, uh, their shoulders were on it. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? He's like, what well, this is kind of like jujitsu. We're, we're going in and this is perfect because we can, I was like, wow. All right. Uh, uh, another new thing that I really didn't know, you know, other people <laughs> just kind of finding things, the new products that we have, the new paddles and everything. I'm not a professional trainer. I know they're great. I know they can do really well in in in, in the hands of someone like Jeff. Um, I need them to come out with um, new new movements because I'm thinking for a trainer how to help 
trainers train better mm -hmm. and not work so hard and alleviate a lot of the stress and impact that comes on shoulders doing holding focus mitts and all this other stuff right i kind of want to you know i i presume next year i want to do like a, a contest um, with our paddles to say hey look you know these are all new i want to i'm going to give you x amount of dollars for the best trainer the best combo that i can see that you use this with your your guys you know just have fun with it right because you know we at the end of the day we want to have fun if you're not having fun doing what you want to do in training you're not doing it right you know i i don't want to get up at six in the morning every time to to, to work out but i think boxing and kickboxing has, has changed my whole mentality of, of training and I love developing product. I think this is, you know, fun. You know, people, you know, I get people. I, I got a uh, award from one of the, there's a lot, but the uh, martial arts uh, group, um, innovator of the year. And I'm like, and then I get these guys calling me Sifu and all this stuff. And I'm like, um, sorry, please do, do not call me that. I, not, that's, I'm now Sifu by any chance. They're like, no, I beg to differ. You're a Sifu in what you're doing. You know, you're, you're building stuff. And I'm like, Okay, thank you. I still don't like it, but I understand what you're trying to say, right? So it, it's it's been such a fun ride. I'm so invigorated in wanting to do more. And again, partnering with Jeff and his team is making that even more exciting. And, and I really want to push harder to make this brand huge and, and out there for everybody to, to experience. Yeah, King, I um I, I think people give it a chance. They're gonna they're gonna love it. And um, I know, at least for me, uh, just even watching and seeing what you've developed, it's intriguing. So, so Jeff, I'll come back to you. I guess, you know, hearing how passionate King is about the development of the technology, and he made a comment about taking it forward, moving it forward, which I think is fantastic, and I think it's needed. For, for you, we'll kind of start to end on this. As we get into 2023, how do you help take King's ideas, his passion, his innovation, and how do you help bring it forward and help get it out to the masses? Yeah, well, I mean, there's uh, multiple ways to do that, obviously. Um, you know, uh, we got the whole products division, which is fantastic. Um, you know, I, I think I don't even think we've scratched the surface yet um, as far as the product distribution is concerned. And King and I are talking about doing some things in that respect, um, you know, but getting these newer studios open um, right now, Silicon Valley out there in California is upgrading to a 10,000 square foot facility. Um, San Francisco is doing fantastic. Um, I believe and correct me if I'm wrong, King, but Los Angeles is coming soon, correct? Yeah, we have we are in talks with um, some people in LA. Yeah, and then uh, possibly Vegas as well, correct? Is Vegas, that... yeah, and then the other one, which you know it hasn't been finalized yet, but we will be global soon and um, partnering with some major people over in uh, Vietnam and Thailand um, in some of those respects too. So, um, yeah, yeah, and then uh, naturally we're here in New Jersey, and um, we have uh, Pittsburgh lined up for. Um, you know, the end of Q1 of next year and then right outside of Philly in Bucks County, not far from you, Joe. Um, we're looking to open one as well. And then uh, at least two more behind that in the very, very near term. So, I mean, we're looking to do at least get, we're looking to do, like King said, 100, 200, 300 of these. But, um, you know, short term speaking, we're looking to get at least five of these up on our side and King and them are hard at work on their side. So, I mean, um, I, I think it's getting these open, spreading the word, getting out in front of people, showing them what we're doing. Um, I think it's critical. And then on the product side, I think, you know, working through certain channels specifically in the way of uh, breaking into markets. You know, I'll just use one example. You know, I'm a member of um, Joe Lewis Fighting Systems, and um, there is an enormous amount of gyms and dojos and people who train, you know, that are um, under that umbrella. That's just one small example. But I think navigating those channels as well and educating people, um, I think, will certainly help spread brand awareness. Um, and we're just making a lot of noise already, to be honest with you. Um, our social media presence is massive. 
Um, King spoke about Thailand, Vietnam. I mean, we're already talking about product division. But it, it's already pretty much global um, in that respect. So it's just a matter of time. Um, you know, the experience in-house, you know, is second to none. Um, gosh, I've been in almost every gym under the sun that does anything similar to what we're doing. And um, you're just not going to find anything like it anywhere. I mean, the music, the lighting, um, the bags, the technology, the service, the expertise, the authenticity, it's all there. There's not one missing ingredient anymore. And, uh, you know, I had a great thing going before I even met King, and uh, we were doing extremely well. And then, um, you know, but there was always something a little bit missing in the way of growing a concept out. And, you know, like King said, um, you know, the marriage between the two of us has really, you know, paved a path forward that we can pursue expeditiously now um, because, you know, we, we have a proven prototype that works. And um, in the individual locations, they're growing like gangbusters, you know. So I think paving that path forward is key. We already know the fitness industry is trending towards boutique style fitness. And that a lot of big box gyms in the past, with exception to your economy gyms and your big kind of country club style gyms like, you know, let's say Equinox, for instance. Um, you know, those two ends of the spectrum seem to be pretty safe. But everybody in the in the middle, as far as regular gyms are concerned, meeting on the big box gyms, they're struggling to find a path forward themselves um, because people, especially since the pandemic, you know, it was already trending this way probably for five years prior to pandemic. But the pandemic has made the fitness industry morph in a hundred different ways super fast. But I think what it all boils down to, and you, you asked King this question, child, about um, someone who says, well, you know, this is we're so much cheaper and stuff like that. And this is just a fad. You know, what I, what I would say to someone like that is you're right. You are cheaper and we're just, you know, we're simply more valuable. You know what I mean? You get what you pay for, right? We're the Mercedes or the Ferrari or whatever you want to call it. And if you're looking for a Ford, not that there's anything wrong with Ford, but if you're looking to really be different and, you know, stand out from what, you know, ordinary folks are doing, you know, you just walked into the Ferrari dealership. Here's your chance, you know, and, uh, and you know, as well as I do, as it relates to almost everything in life. You know, um, it's a little cliche to say this, but you get what you pay for, you know. Um, anybody can pick up a cheap run-in-the-mill bag. Anybody could throw treadmills and weights into a room and call it a, a gym or a boot camp. But, um, you know, but uh, people have been doing this stuff and spinning their wheels all the time. How many businesses like this have we seen come in and out? You know, boxing, kickboxing, MMA has been trending now for you know, people, some people still want to argue that it's a fad or a trend, but it's it's been a fad and trending this way for 20 years now. <laughs> you know, I think it's here to stay. And um, but since COVID specifically, people have become, you know, not only fitness conscious, but they've become super quality conscious, you know, um, more than I've ever seen. And people are recognizing that. You know, not only is this important for my health, you know what I mean? But um, if I really want to get those benefits that I'm looking for, I'm going to have to spend a little more money, you, you know, plain and simple, you know. And uh, and that's kind of where, where we're at. And, uh, you know, there's other boxing gyms. There's other, you know, um, gyms doing boxing classes and all. But even the components – you know, um, for instance, here in Jersey, I designed a curriculum from scratch. You know, our classes are modeled after actual fight styles and actual fights even. You know what I mean? You may come in on a Tuesday and find that the workouts, you know, modeled after the Rocky Marciano, uh, Archie Moore fight from 50, 60 years ago and the combinations fall in line with that particular fighting style. And then the exercises that we do during that class fall in line with building certain levels of strength, endurance, stamina that are suitable for that specific fighting style. So, I mean, we put a ton of time and energy into the science behind what we're doing. You know, we don't want the members to, 
you know, to to feel that we want them to have a great experience and smile. Let us worry about all the science. But I spend at least five to ten hours a week minimum just designing content, you know. And uh, and then in addition to that, we offer circuit style training as well, strength classes and all that good stuff. We have that other equipment. We have treadmills. We have aerosol bikes, vertical climbers, dumbbells, kettlebells, medicine balls. You name it. Um, you know, King has um, partnerships now with companies like Rogue, um, Zebra Athletics. So not only, you know, ha- are, are we doing really good stuff in the studio, King is doing amazing, innovative stuff behind the scenes. And then we also have with us now these alliances with some of the best brands in the business supporting the growth and vision of what we're trying to do. And, um, you know, it, it's a, just a all in all recipe for success. Yeah, man, it sounds like you guys are doing, you know, amazing work. And I'm real excited to help, you know, get this out there. I want people to see this, especially as 2023 starts to come around and people start to really, you know, want to get those health and fitness goals in line for uh, 2023. I like to tell people now, you know, that I don't want to hear about your resolution they're short lived it's goals. And I think you guys are going to help keep people on track with that. Um, Just real quick. I want to end with this for each of you. I give you each a minute here and I want it to be based on something you said, Jeff. So starting up 2023, somebody's ready to start, but in King, I'll start with themselves. I want to get fit. I want to be healthy, but I don't need a Ferrari. I can't afford a Ferrari. What would you say to them to help get them in to make it worth their while. So my, my, my whole approach to that, and I, I didn't touch on that as much as I should have, but when I think of it, it, going back to my Muay Thai coach, right? King, you want to do personals with me? Okay, fine. Okay, how much? $600. What? $600. Okay, well, okay. No, but now as, as I think about it, and I think back to that conversation I had, I had with him, and I look at my pricing, I say, okay, there's $30 gyms out there. And we're, I'm actually on the high side over here because I'm a smaller gym. And I say, okay, um, how long is it going to take you working in a group class at $30 where you get zero personal touch from that trainer as opposed to you working in our gym, smaller, but we give a lot more personal touch. So spread that money out. So if it takes you to get to your goal, one year to get to you, it takes you a year at that gym where it takes you three, three months to get to the same goal at a <clears throat> fitness gym, do the math. I think it evens out on the math. I mean, that's plain and simple. And I, I've changed my whole mentality. Personal training with my trainer, I do an hour w- w- with my boxing trainer. I won't get that in a regular gym with anybody else, with 10 or 12 other people. And that's going to take me longer to progress. At least I retain the the, the boxing, the, the skills that I have faster. So that's my whole take on the money aspect of it. It's all relative. Yeah, no, I think you bring up a great point, King. And, you know, I would add to that too. And I think people, especially since the pandemic and what we've seen with the pandemic and just health in general, you know what, your health is an investment and I don't think you should shortchange that. So Jeff, same to you. Especially, you know, Kings out there in California, you know, I know that's a little different. You, me growing up, Philly, Jersey, little gritty, maybe not as much money for people. What are you doing to help kind of get the people to not to not to worry about that so much and to get them in there and and make them know that it's worth it? Yeah, well, I mean, the first step is to making them realize, you know, how important it is. Um, You know, one of the first questions I ask people through the door is on a scale of one to 10, how important is your health and fitness to you? If somebody tells me a two, you know, to be quite honest, they might be in the wrong place, <laughs> you know, but when someone tells me a seven, eight, nine, or maybe 10, well, goodness, I don't think there's anything a person with that mentality wouldn't do to try to achieve what they're trying to achieve, you know, and I'll equate the journey to, um, you know, a a trek up up the side of a mountain, right? You know, um, you could spend $50 and get a cool bike and ride up that mountain, but you're going to tire quick and you're going to fall off at points, take breaks, and you may never make it to see that peak, right? Or I can uh, sell you this cool four-wheel drive truck and make that drive up the mountainside 
feel like a walk in the park on a sunny afternoon. You know, um, is that worth it to you? You know, and um, most people who, um, you know, make fitness and good health a priority are going to understand that value and not even question the price point. And um, and I can speak firsthand and King can as well. Um, we don't get any pushback on price, you know, and I think that's partly due to, you know, let's face it, times have changed, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, growing up, when we grew up, you know, we got our exercise through sport mm-hmm. and it didn't cost us much of anything. Mm-hmm. But, you know, um, those times are, you know, they just don't exist like they used to. Yeah, no, I agree, Jeff. And, you know, I, I'll just add to that, knowing that, you know, especially the last three years, I've been through my own journey that, you know, for my audience, I, and I and I say and this, King, and you and I being the same age, 50, Jeff, you're almost there. You know, I think people get a little too short-sighted sometimes when it comes to a cost of something, right? Because especially when it comes to our health and fitness, if I'm going to have any chance to make money in my future, the first thing I need is my health. So any investment I make in my health is only going to pay me dividends down the line. So, I mean, I think people and I've had other personal trainers on and I say it all the time, you know, in, invest, invest, invest. You won't regret it. And with somebody like King and Jeff that they're trying hard to bring this, the service aspect, the technology aspect, the fitness aspect all together that I don't even think I can put a price point on that because I think to Jeff's point, you're going to achieve your goals that much quicker, quicker. And to King's point, you're going to retain a lot of that. So this investment isn't something that's going to leave you and it becomes a way of life. So guys, I, I love what you're doing. Jeff, you're my brother, but I'm a huge fan of everything that you guys got going on. And I'll put the, uh, you know, links to the site. I want to get some video to share with the podcast. And I, like I said, I really appreciate you guys jumping on and, uh, Hopefully people watching this, we're ready to kick off 2023 in a big way. Let, let's get to it, people. King, Jeff, thank you both for joining. I really appreciate it, guys. Yeah, thanks, thank man. Thank you, Charles. This has been The Bare Essentials. Thanks for listening. And remember, never hibernate on your goals.